let's talk about what road schooling has really been like. Hi, I am Rachel from Seven and All, and today I just wanted to kind of give you a little life update, homeschool update, and share about what these past two months of kind of road schooling have been like for our family. Just to update you in case you aren't aware or if you're newer to this channel, um, my family lives in Southeast Asia normally, but we are currently on a little bit of longer term travel and we're in the US. We're spending a lot of time with our family, we're seeing old friends, and we've been traveling to different states because our family is a little bit scattered across the US. And we're kind of considering this our road schooling and adventure. This is something very unusual for us to get to spend this much time in the country where I was born. So I'm very, uh, really enjoying having my sons kind of be introduced to so much more of our family and to our culture back here. But how is it going? That's what I wanted to update you guys on because when you talk about kind of road schooling or longer term travel, uh, you kind of can get two responses from people either People are like, that's crazy and that does not sound fun. I want to have my home. I want to be cozy. I like my routine. That's kind of the one response is, that sounds horrible. Um, that's probably what my brother would say <laughs> um, if you asked him to, about long-term travel. Then the other response from other people, it often can kind of be a bit of a bucket list item or kind of a long-term dream that people do want to try out at some point in their lives. So I wanted to update you guys on how it's going for our family and with our two young sons. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Um, my parents and my two youngest sisters who are um, in high school and in upper elementary school, they are also on this long-term travel adventure. We are together now. We weren't together at the beginning of the adventure. We were in our two separate parts of the US, but we're together now. So I am updating you on all of it today. So number one point I wanted to make uh, for us, this whole road schooling adventure, this long-term travel, it's both motivated by and made possible by our family. So it's largely motivated by our family because we really wanted our children to have a chance to develop close relationships and have the gift of time to develop relationships with our family that they don't get to see very regularly um, where we live. It's also made possible by family because, let me just tell you, in two months of travel, we've spent one night in a hotel. And that could have been avoided actually with a little bit of better planning. It was kind of accidental. Um, but we've had family or friends hosting us this whole time. You know, our family is the kind that, you know, finds a spare mattress, finds a couch, find, buys an air mattress, whatever. There's always space for four more <laughs> um, to add to the house. And we've also stayed with friends. Uh, and we've been staying in our family members' houses and they're like, you know, hey, whatever's, whatever's in the fridge, just eat it. We have very loving, kind family that includes us and that is, that is such a nice thing to come home to when you've been gone for a long time, um, to know that you still kind of have a place, even if you don't have your own home, you have a place with your family. And I know that this is um, not something everyone has for sure, so it's not something I take for granted. I also don't want you to be discouraged by this, by me saying the, the reason we can do this is because of our family and the reason that we do this is because of our family. I don't want you to be discouraged by this because there are many, many families who do long-term travel in different ways. Um, and who do it without staying with family or who buy RVs and travel around um, driving. There are many different ways to road school. I'm just sharing that that's how and why and the way that we make this work for our family is we're, we're staying with my brother, we're staying with my uncle and aunt, we're staying with my in-laws. So that that is what's making this possible. A big part of this trip is really about seeing family. The second topic I wanted to talk about was kind of the question of is it really tiring and really challenging to do long-term travel with young kids? And to this I would say, well, yes, of course it is. <laughs> um, to be out of completely out of home routine, to have no your bedroom and your bed and your um, bathroom, to have none of these things for months on end with a two-year-old and a four-year-old, yes, that's tiring and challenging. But I would also like to say as a counterpoint, we should not be too scared of being tired or of being challenged 
especially when it's a good thing that is tiring us or that is challenging us. That's good for us. That's good for our kids. Um, so yes, I would say some of the biggest things I have noticed is, you know, all nap time routine has disappeared. My two-year-old normally took a two to three hour nap every afternoon. Nowadays, their nap time routine is whenever we're in the car, they fall asleep as soon as they hit their car seats, basically. <laughs> That's been the nap time routine. I've also noticed that my two-year-old has been very much um, attached to me, much more attached to me than usual, which he's always been, he's always been my baby who, who likes to be attached to me, but more so than usual. And I think it's just being constantly in a different place. Um, we've been in eight states total. Um, we've slept in about eight different houses. Uh, we've, you know, we're constantly in a different place seeing new people. I think he's just been a little extra attached to mommy and that's totally fine. That's totally age appropriate. Um, but those are just some of the kind of things I have noticed. They've done really well with, you know, eating and going to bed and all of those type of things. Uh, and they're learning a lot. Speaking of learning, for my third point, I want to give an update on the school part of road schooling, <laughs> the learning part of road schooling. So for my four-year-old, I packed from home just like a folder and basically I just ripped out the last bit of worksheets from an Evan Moore workbook that we had and I brought along the rest of the Alphabet Adventures worksheets that I had printed. So I just wanted to like have some of those things printed um, for him to do. And then once we got here, I bought him the Summer Bridge P through K book and he has, he likes this one a lot. He really likes that one. That one's kind of easy and fun for him. And he also likes this one I got him, very inexpensive numbers one through 30 and it has stickers that he can put on as he goes through the pages for a while we weren't putting him on the racetrack so he's actually further along than that but how many days have we actually used these workbooks and worksheets that i bought um, i've calculated and counted about 20 days within two months of being on the road so if you think about that that's about half i guess the normal of number the normal number of school days within a month so that's not a whole lot of school days, you know, <laughs> only two to three school days in a week. And I am perfectly okay with that. My goal in bringing along workbooks for him was that I, he'd already progressed so much in being able to write numbers and write letters and know all their sounds and count and all that. I just didn't want him to lose the skills that he had. I wanted to have something that on those quiet days or days when there's not a lot going on that kids can be involved in, some days when, you know, sometimes just a 15 minutes of sitting at a table and coloring and using a pencil can kind of be a grounding, um, calming experience. Uh, it definitely has been helpful for those days when he's kind of running wild in other people's houses and they don't have toys for kids or something like that. It's been really nice to be able to say, hey, we're going to sit down at the table. We're going to calm ourselves a little bit, work a little bit on our books. Um, it's been a nice thing for those days, but a lot of our days we have there's been no place for schoolwork in our days. We've been at an antique tractor show from morning until night, or we've been on the road, literally, from morning until night, or out at all the different places that we have been to so far. So on the days when we're out and about, where we're going swimming into the splash pad and doing all those things, school is not happening, and I don't, um, that was not the purpose of these. The purpose of these is for those days that there's not much going on for little ones. They don't have their normal toys. They don't have their normal routine, but having a few workbooks can be calming once they're starting to like spiral a little bit, get a little wild in other people's houses. This has been great. <laughs> um, also, my elementary age sister has been picking up books from thrift stores, like we've been buying 50 cent books um, that with Newbery medals or different, you know, different kind of historical fiction for the most part. And so she's been doing the reading, as was her plan. My teenage sister has not done so much of her Chinese practice, but she I noticed she did pack her Chinese book for our next trip, so she's optimistic that she will be able to practice um, her Chinese characters on the next trip we're about to head off on. Besides book learning, um, we have just had so many life opportunities that are not possible within our normal life or just simply don't exist in our normal lives. We've had many cultural learning opportunities, my boys spent four weeks around their Spanish-speaking extended family. Uh, so that was amazing, and we got to eat, of course, a lot of 
fantastic Mexican food. I would, I mean, you should go to Texas for the food alone, guys. It is so good. <laughs> So good. Uh, and besides the food, we got to hear a live mariachi band. Uh, so we had a lot of cultural uh, opportunities in that sense with my husband's family and then also with my family here in Michigan. My boys have been experiencing little bits and pieces of farm life. They got to harvest turnips and radishes and my older son fell in love with the word harvest and he kept saying, I'm a harvester. Or while I was harvesting, I found a worm. <laughs> he really liked that word. They've got to pick blueberries, they've got to pick wild black raspberries. So they've done a lot of collecting of food on their own and I just think that's such a good um, learning opportunity. So we've been helping at my little sister's urban farm. The kids have gotten to feed the chickens. Um, and then with my other family members, we've been going driving on the antique tractors. My little two-year-old even learned that you need to move the flywheel as part of starting an antique tractor because I was sitting on one of them with him. And I said, oh, you know, we can't drive it, it's not on. And he pointed to the flywheel and he's like, that, spinning around. He's like, you gotta turn that one around, mom. You know, shouldn't you know this by now? <laughs> um, so we've had many, many great opportunities to connect our sons with things that are very important to our culture, our lives, our past. So I'm really happy um, with all of the, the life learning opportunities that they are having as well. And for my sisters, that has been a big thing too. For my youngest sister, this is her first time in the USA at all. So every single thing is new. The trees are different, <laughs> the plants and flowers are different. It's a totally different climate than anything she's experienced. And for my teenage sister, it's also been a really long time since she's been here or done any of the kind of things, you know, every, everything just looks different <laughs> here. So a great experiential um, learning for them. Next, I wanted to address the road part of road schooling because we have been spending a significant part of the time driving around on long roads. We actually drove all the way from Texas to Michigan, which is a fairly long drive and that was not planned. And that was also why we ended up in a hotel unplanned because we decided not to do the whole thing in one straight shot like we used to when we were young and didn't have children. <laughs> um, but for how are we managing the road trip, uh, my boys are great in cars and on roads because they love their car seats and fall asleep a good chunk of the time when they're in the car. We have also found um, that my older son is really into coloring and especially he's into coloring dinosaurs. So I've been finding any cheap um, dollar store dinosaur coloring book I can find or this one is Dover. The Dover coloring books are the best. You know, they, they're classic. They've been around forever. Ordered this one from online and he'll just color for two hours straight on a, on a drive if needed so that this is um, one of my number one tricks for him right now. The other thing we use to entertain them on road trips is snacks. Uh, when we first bought the car seats, we're like, why do they have cup holders? That seems so weird. Why would a car seat need a cup holder? But we have discovered that cup holders are awesome on car seats because they can hold their snacks for the trip. <laughs> so um, they've done really fantastic on the car rides. I am someone who prefers road trips to airplane trips with little kids because, you know, if they're a little noisy or they're talking or whatever, you don't have to worry about them bothering other people. Of course, we did have that big long plane trip to get here and we're going to have it to get back to. So that's kind of my recap of the first two months of our road school adventure. The next two months are going to look totally different and we're going to be in like totally different states and different parts of the state. We are currently, as I speak, um, packing the cars to head to a basically a remote island where you have to bring all your food that you're going to need for the whole time you're there and bring all the band-aids and anything else that you plan on needing <laughs> um, because there's nowhere to buy anything on the island. I'm very excited about that. And I think that will be a wonderful opportunity for the boys to live in kind of the wilderness a little bit. And so that's my update. I will be seeing you next time. Bye.